Mr. Udaya, thank you so much for being with Bloomberg today. Uh, so you slightly missed our consensus for net income for the first quarter. Could you tell me what impacted your profit? But you, you have two, two exceptional items. The, the biggest one is uh, just the impact of the improvement of our own spread. You know that when our spread is improving, there is a negative impact on the NBI. It's a pure accounting effect, which has no prudential consequence. Then the second element, which wait for something like 60 million of net profit, it is the impact of the situation in Ivory Coast, Tunisia, Egypt. In these three countries, our banks had to close for a certain period of time. They all reopened, but nevertheless, they had to close. It means less revenues, and we decided to account for some costs. And we decided also to put a 50 million euro of prudential uh, risk provisioning, which of course has an impact. These are the two elements. Otherwise, if you put that aside, really I'm happy with the performance of the businesses. The uh, impact you may have felt in uh, the Middle East and in Ivory Coast, isn't that, I mean, you're very strong in emerging markets, but obviously it's associated with risk. Isn't that uh, kind of a wake-up call saying, you know, emerging markets, obviously you have to be careful? You know, it's not new, and we knew about the political uh, risk uh, around the succession of a certain number of uh, chiefs of, sta of, of, of state, like in Egypt uh, and in Tunisia, just looking at their, their age. So, I mean, that was not something which was not expected. Effectively, of course, the events, uh, the, the triggering of the events was unexpected. So now the question is, what kind of scenario you will have? I cannot predict the future. Let me just say that my own view is that it is so critical for the international community, for the stability of the region, and in particular for Europe, that I feel that the international community will weigh as much as they can that it goes in the right direction. That's, that's a comfort, and I must say we have very strong banks, and I think we can do good business, even if there's some still volatility, and of course potentially lower growth, in particular in 2011, than expected at the beginning of the year. Good performance on the investment banking division. Uh, could you tell me how is the beginning of the second quarter in terms of trading activities? Now, first of all, <coughs> I just would like to, to again re-emphasize that we are carrying on transforming our business. We limit the risks. We do not increase the capital allocated to the division, but the revenue is growing. And so it's uh, because we invest in new businesses and we are be able to, to, uh, to develop on that basis. And, and I'm happy with the first results of these investments. Now, where, where it will go, it's good, I cannot predict. What is fair to say, in April, uh, the UK was more or less on holidays. I just would like to highlight that for very happy reasons, there were two uh, weekends or four days. So it means, of course, less activity during this period. Um, but still, how was the beginning? Was that a good start of the second quarter? Yeah, I, I will not comment every, every quarter. Wait, wait for the end of the second quarter. <laughs> Uh, let's talk about Russia for yeah. a little bit. Um, you're very, you have a very strong presence in Russia. Uh, you return to profit in the fourth quarter, uh, but many other banks such as Barclays, Santander and recently HSBC are abandoning their retail units in Russia. What makes you feel that you can succeed there? Uh, isn't it difficult to do business in Russia and to compete with domestic banks? Let me just say, what, what I th what is the, the, the banking sector in Russia is going to look like in five years' time, in my mind? Probably it will be concentrated in something like 10 banks, not more, like in any other markets. You will have certainly two, two or three major domestic Russian banks. Sberbank, VTB, you can see that they are consolidating and they will probably dominate the markets. Then you will have one, two, three Russian banks, some of them very close to certain conglomerates. In terms of foreign banks, clearly, in order to compete, you need size. And the banks which are exiting did not have effectively the size. They just had a couple of branches. We are in a very different situation where we have effectively 700 outlets, 700 branches. We are merging a different entity. And clearly, our ambition is to be the bank of reference, the number one foreign bank in this market. And I really believe that we can uh, sell that, you know, because precisely, we bring a security, we bring uh, uh, added products, we bring a high quality of products, and I think there's a lot for us to do in Russia. 
So you're maintaining your target of uh, Russia being the biggest contributor to international retail banking division by 2015? Uh, yeah, yeah, certainly, you know, it's the largest market, uh, even in Europe, in terms of size of the population. Russia, if the world is carrying on growing and if the commodity prices remain as high as they are, will make a lot of money. Russia is already and will be further a rich country. There is money to be made. Of course, the economy has to diversify. There are challenges. But fundamentally, compared with a lot of countries, I think there will be many opportunities for us. You have another very ambitious target, 6 billion euros annual profit by 2012. Are you maintaining this target? How do you plan to achieve it? Well, it's certainly the objective on which we work. I just would like to highlight, when you look already at the net profit of certain division, uh, we, we, can, uh, we are very close to our, to, our, to our ambition. Look at just the French retail, uh, which is uh, also a very spectacular... But just how much the French retail is going to represent in these 6 billion euros? But it's 1.5. You know, we, we said between 1.4 and 1.6. CIB is making this quarter uh, 600 million of net profit, despite still a cost of risk on, on the legacy asset, a small one, but it's still... A, so, I mean, there's a lot to be done. Uh, I cannot predict the environment on the international retail. And if there is one question mark, it's of course where it can go. And here I cannot predict. Uh, I remind you the six billion whereas in certain situation. I cannot predict on, on the evolution of the world. But certainly, I think at the beginning of the year, we are on track. We're working hard on the NBI, on, on, the, on the cost. I must say, we are growing the gross operating income. If you put aside this issue of the uh, uh, spread, we are one of the few banks, I think, which is able to grow the gross operating income. And then the cost of risk will carry on decreasing. So we have the two levers we have now to deliver. We work hard for that. Uh, and let's see at the end of 2012. So what's the midterm target for 2011? I don't have a real target for 2011, if you wish. My, my target is fundamentally 2012. Uh, I, I, I have in mind, in the coming quarters, potentially volatility on, on, on the own spread. But let's even put that aside. It can vary from one, one quarter to the other in certain countries. So my target is fundamentally to achieve, to put the house in order and, and to have something normalized in, ter the tos in terms of cost of risk for 2012 and again benefit from all the investment, the hard work we do on the gross operating income. Uh, and again, the focus is, is on 2012. Let's talk a little bit about the uh, debt crisis in Europe. Just last night, Portugal announced a three-year plan with 78 billion euros. Uh, how much do you think Portugal has impacted the confidence in the Eurozone? Um, like, is there any worry that there's not enough conditionality of these loans, for example? I might be wrong, but I have the, the feeling that the situation is actually a bit even clearer today than, than six, nine months ago. You have three countries which were ident identified as potentially at risk, Ireland, Greece, Portugal. They all benefit from a support. They have to address issues, uh, different ones, but they have to address issues. And it's really their priority. Then, in my mind, clearly Spain has shown that it does not belong to this category. Uh, some people uh, felt that. I think they were wrong. We told that. And I think they have also really addressed, their, they are addressing their issues and belong to another category. So that, that's good for Europe. There's a lot of work to be done still in all European countries. There's a lot to be done in the US. There is no miracle. It will take probably years. It's a lot of discipline. But that's needed after a period where effectively the debt has increased probably too much. So specifically, do you have any comment on, on Portugal on this, mm -hmm. on this uh, package? Do you think there's not no. enough conditionality? Some people no. may have criticized that. I, I don't have, you know, I'm not involved in these discussions. I'm sure it has been done properly. One second about the Greek debt. Do you think a restructuring of the Greek debt is inevitable? Really, again, the priority is to put the house in order. You cannot restructure uh, without having first, again, try to do everything you can to reimburse. It's the case for any company. So again, I think it's absolutely premature. Greece is addressing in a courageous way its, uh, its issues. Just recently, they, they also tried to address the tax evasion. There is a privatization program. There are different levers. It is the priority still, definitely in my mind. So you don't think the uh, restructuring the Greek debt is in the plan? At least uh, soon, certainly not in my mind. And uh, would you consider, like, if you could sell your Greek assets, would you consider selling them? Or would you, would you want to keep them? 
Well, we have, first of all, a, a very limited presence in Greece, a small subsidiary. We are uh, trying to manage that as well as possible in a difficult uh, environment. Uh, going forward, we will see, but the priority is again to manage the subsidiary as much as we can, as well as we can. So it could be a possibility of shutting down, your, because <laughs> they are like cutting staff and closing branches at the moment. Yeah, but, but you know, we, we adapt to an environment where it's difficult to grow revenues, where we don't want to take additional risk in practice, and it's difficult, and people do not invest particularly, they don't borrow. So effectively, we have to work on the cost line in practice. So it's possible you would get out of Greece. Or, or optimize anyway, and, and at least optimize the, 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 the business so that it remains reasonably, it, it becomes, it has the capacity to be profitable at some point. Um, the European Commission recently opened probes on credit default swaps. Uh, are you confident that Societe Generale will be cleared? Because uh, you're, like with BNP and other French banks, you're being investigated. Uh, are you worried? I'm not particularly worried, you know. I mean, we are a relatively small player, you know. The, the issue is about, uh, apparently, do we give uh, just to one company the price? I feel, I, I really, it's not in my uh, radar under my, if you wish, uh, an issue for me. I don't think it's, it's an issue for Société Générale. But more generally, do you think a, a regulatory <laughs> crackdown on the CDS markets could impact your margins? No, it's not, it's not a big business for us. Huh? We, we, we are not a big player. We support the idea of clearing houses. Uh, it's, in our view, a good idea. Uh, it's really not an issue for us. Um, obviously, uh, you're also um, a director for the Institute for, for, this, for this lobby, for the Institute for International Finance. Um, do you think it would be a good idea to, have, uh, to allow too big to fail banks to use these cocos uh, to uh, reach capital requirements? First of all, let me just say that the banking sector is facing potentially a number of reforms which I think are, are absolutely excessive. Uh, and, and we need really the collectively to ensure the system can cope with all these uh, measures. Basel III in itself is a big change. And you know we still challenge the liquidity rules. There is this issue of CFIs, uh, which can change fundamentally the picture. Uh, we'll see where it goes, but uh, if you say, uh, it's a big change if you say that size will be penalized by more capital versus the pre-crisis rule, where size on the contrary was a, a kind of benefit. You have talks about resolution funds, things like that, and effectively uh, resolution schemes. Uh, is uh, is the COCO one instrument which can be helpful? We, there is a special group uh, of the IF under the leadership of Peter Sands which work on that. Uh, there has been one or two examples. It's, it's very complex because you need to ensure the, in the specificity of the instrument that it can work in all legislation. It's too early to say. Uh, I, I feel that it can bring something. Anyway, it will not sort the whole issue. And, I, I still believe that Basel III in itself provides much more security to the system and that regulators really need to, to think that uh, the, system, the security of the system of course relies on banks but also the, non -shadow, uh, the, the shadow banking system and that to a certain extent what is taking place is putting more risk in the shadow banking system and they have also to deal with this risk because it concerns everybody of us when we invest in the equity market, when we invest in the bond markets, etc. The turmoil also, which can impact these systems, can be linked also by the, to the shadow banking system. But still, the too big to fail, like if you're considered too big to fail, is still a major concern for you in terms of impact on profitability. Yeah, well, if you wish, again, on top of Basel III, on, on, on top of additional taxes, the fact that we might have to increase further the hurdle, of course, and in, in terms of profitability and competition, raises big question marks. If you say that if you get bigger, you need to be, have more capital, you can question even your size. So it can change dramatically the strategic thought process. Let's wait. It's not done, but clearly uh, it is a very important element. Do you think we should back off a little bit? Like I think, again, I fully understand the need to have a more resilient banking system. Uh, I can just say that in practice, for example, in France, 
we had effectively a very resilient system. And the French government made money uh, on, on its temporary backing. Uh, it was confirmed by uh, European statistics. So I think that capital is not necessarily just the answer. You have the quality of the regulation. When I say that, of course, of the regulator himself, but also the way loans are generated. So if you wish, it's a whole framework to ensure the resilience of the system. Just addressing that through capital increase will weigh certainly on the capacity of the banking sector in Europe to finance the economy. Mario Draghi says like most major European banks will have to raise capital within one year. Will you have to? We are generating. We are generating this quarter an additional 30 basis point of quarter I consider that by reviewing our business model, adjusting our business model, thanks to our profit, we do not need to raise capital. And if you wish, again, banks will be constrained by all kinds of ratios, liquidity, capital, etc. They will need to review their business models. I prefer to optimize my business model rather than raise a lot of capital that I will not be able to use and that I will redistribute through dividends. So my preference is clearly for a disciplined uh, approach in the, last two, in the next two to three years, for a reasonable payout ratio, uh, option to have a script dividend, strict discipline of capital monitoring, and of course the profit, which will help us to, to meet the requirements. I have a question about headcount. Uh, you said like this year in France you're going to hire like 4,000 uh, people. Um, what about headcount in other countries? Do you have any other numbers in terms of hiring? We, we if you wish, we, uh, it, it depends again on each business, on each country. Fundamentally, we want to develop, we, we are one of the few banks in my mind with some capacity to grow in the next two to three years. Given what happened in the world, it's not that obvious. We will be selective. Uh, in, 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 uh, in CIB, we have increased our front office staff because the business is changing. And, and we've again, as I've said, first results, which are very promising. Uh, we want to further open a few branches uh, in the Median Basin, but we will review that depending on the events. In Russia, it's a mix. On one hand, we can save some staff but the ambition is to further develop the network, you know, so it really depends on its geographies. Finally, uh, investment banking, you also have very big ambitions on becoming a very uh, top player. Uh, and um, what, how do you think this can be achievable without a strong presence in the US? If I may correct you, I I'm not sure. We, ha we want to remain focused precisely, uh, as you said, because in the US we will have a development. The fact that we are now a primary dealer, that we are able to have active mandates in US dollar, and we've had very successful mandates, is again a very promising result. But we don't want to expand and compete directly with the budget bracket on the US. So if you wish, we remain focused. We want to, to take advantage of our key strengths. We want to maintain a business model. What we need to do, what we want to do is remain a key euro bank, because it's our currency, but effectively to offer to our clients and the dollar is still a very important currency, access to the market if they wish. We, want, we, we are a key player in commodity, in mining, in energy. You need to have a dollar presence to make more revenues. We want, of course, to have also selective development in Asia. We will remain focused. We have the ambition to grow the revenues. We will be smaller than other players, in particular the US. I think, nevertheless, we can definitely have a robust business model and profitable one. Finally, finally, what's the main challenge in your opinion this year? My challenge is execution. Uh, if you wish, uh, more than ever, I think that we are, have switched from, uh, if you wish, a, a, a situation of crisis, and let's say I'm confident in the fact that the cost of risk would progressively diminish, to uh, a transformation mood. Uh, the world is, is changing, it's fundamentally changing. Banks in Europe have to change fundamentally because of all the economic changes, the regulatory changes. And so my challenge is to execute uh, and have the 160,000 people in Societe Generale aligned and working aligned uh, uh, on these goals. It's, it's, uh, it's about that. It is difficult, but it's fascinating and, and I'm very enthusiastic about the challenge. Thank you very much. You're welcome.